Nine and ten. Nine and ten. We're getting back to it. Making making moves. Making moves. So we're gonna recap Palmetto Bluff half marathon, which was very exciting. We had how many people out there? I think it was close to. We had like fourteen athletes racing this thing. Yeah. Yeah. It was, that was awesome. Time. Yeah. Yeah. So my race went well. Um, I improved by I think two minutes off of my Hilton Head half time. So it helped, I think, really taper for that one, which was nice. Mm -hmm. um, I teach a few fitness classes at work a week, and I think that that is something that I have to look into communicating about, especially because I even taught a class on Thursday. Yeah, it's tough. I mean, we, we have to take a closer look at Lindsay's training because like, on days where she's doing strength, she's almost jumping right into uh, something that's aerobic. Uh, you know, less than less than three hours from when she did her strength. So yeah. um, her times were a little bit faster last year by a few minutes, not much. Same, you know, training protocol. Um, so we're really just trying to dial that in. But mm -hmm. she's been improving from and the, the big picture. Yeah. yeah. And the other thing that I changed about this race was I didn't wear a watch. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that was different. Mentally, that I think during training and it helps, but during a race I find that I just look at it way too much so mm -hmm. it was nice to kind of just run and not think about that do you think you'll do that for future races yeah like not wear a watch yeah 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 unless it's something that I'm using as like a training run mm -hmm. yeah yeah I mean for the interval stuff that we're doing like yeah. it's critical to have a watch and to have that stuff dialed in but yeah yeah, every athlete's got their own take on watches. I mean, I look at it a lot, but it helps motivate me to keep up and, and go faster, and it kind of allows me to check in where I am a little bit. But I didn't use – I just used the mile splits on, uh, on Palmetto Bluff, mm -hmm. and that worked out fine. You know, as long as I can measure, I just hit the button and looked at it. So once every mile, uh, that seemed to be, be good to go since my $500 watch was stolen. So if you're the one who stole it, Please give it back. He needs it. <laughs> I need it. But oh, Jesus. Are you okay? Yes, I think I cut my... Okay, I cut that part. <laughs> Sorry. Anyways, Palmetto Bluff half was incredible. Um, with all of our athletes, they did awesome. We had David um, ran 125 on his half. He's decreased his volume in running so mm -hmm. much after you know listening to, listening to the fire method a little bit more. Um, and he ran... Uh, I said 125, one first place Masters. Um, again. <laughs> again, yeah, so he's cleaning up the awards. And then uh, who, who else? You came in second in your age group, right? Mm -hmm. So uh, Stacy came in second in her age group. Uh, Lynn, who has not been really training a whole lot um, since being laid up with some. Uh, what was she in the hospital for? Just She's some training. Stuff. She's training? She's training. Yeah, but it's been like four months and she hit a PR, so it wasn't like... Yeah. What I mean is like her training, like she is always training, obviously, but she was like... She was cooped up for a little bit. Yeah, exactly. Um, to see her hit that PR was pretty surprising, which is mm -hmm. awesome. Um, we had three athletes with their first half marathon. Um, that was cool. So Steve, he ran right with Lynn the whole way. They were around the, just under 150, I think. And then... Uh, Alexa ran the whole way. She blew yeah, away my cool. expectations. Yeah. yeah, that was awesome. And then Kelly uh, finished her first half. So they all had a good experience, and they were pumped that they had done it and did really well, too. Yeah, uh, and then you. Yeah, we'll have to talk about me, but Susan as well. So at this race, getting to me, too, um, we had the overall winner, and then we had uh, the last place runner as well. Um, and I think that's... Personally, I think it's the same thing because both of those positions are pretty inspiring. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I PR'd by two minutes, had a great race, uh, ran 117.35. Um, what I liked about my race is I was smart on the pacing. I, I saw my first mile split was like 5.30, uh, and then I immediately just backed it down to 6.30. I was like, I know I can hold sixes, and then I'm going to see like towards the end of the, the half like what I had left, and I had plenty left, so... I started dropping my pace down to, mm -hmm. you know, like 550 um, towards the end. But, yeah, I uh, two-minute PR, uh, 555 pace the whole way and ended up winning the thing, which was cool. Um, second half marathon win ever, um, but it's, it's 
cool to see. And your hometown. Yeah, hometown. It's pretty cool. Lots of people were there. Yeah. And it's it's kind of just, the only reason I race now is, you know, more to show people to believe in this method of training is that you can do this and compete at a high level. Mm -hmm. um, you don't have to be out there killing the miles. It's just a different way of doing it. Uh, but Susan, yeah, she ended up uh, finishing last. I think her quote was, you know you're going kind of slow when they're closing down the um, water stations. But, like, that's that's incredible. I mean, 95% of people don't run half marathons in the first place. This was her second one um, where she was scared to do a 5K not long ago, like nine months ago was her first 5K. She's having all these knee issues. I mm -hmm. mean, she really yeah, she's had, battled it out there. Yeah, and it's just incredible to see her push and to still want to keep coming. And, and I think that kind of goes back to the group feel thing that we have going on is that um, – not only her, but we had a great time after the race too. We had everyone yeah. over here to celebrate, and uh, that's more, more why we race. Is it's an awesome group of people, and everyone just wants to uh, help each other get better. Yep, that's really good. Plus, I think the other thing is when you've got other people that can share. It's it's just it's nice because we also had people outside of the running team that kind of mm -hmm. came over, and mm -hmm. it's just becoming more and more of a bigger community. Yeah, it's I awesome. I mean, that's what CTF's all about, is the community and it's something very special. Um, but huge race. Uh, Mary had an awesome time, too. She wasn't even going to sign up, and she um, finished strong, had a good race. Not a PR, mm -hmm. but um, really good, good, solid time mm -hmm. for her. Um, yeah, Palmetto yeah. Bluff half. Yep, good that, things. That's the last big race before, <laughs> before Boston. Yep, and then this week, and, well, we're six weeks out. Mm -hmm. So now we're going to ramp up the volume a little bit, right? Yeah, we're going to start crushing some stuff because the, the time's right. I mean, 12 weeks is really all we need. Uh, we've been going at it for 16 weeks, but start ramping the volume. We're adding uh, a little bit more conditioning, uh, even to the CrossFit wad um, on Wednesdays. Mm -hmm. So that'll be interesting to play with. Um, but yeah, the time is, the time is now. Yep. So we'll run Mondays, Wednesdays, Thursdays, and then something longer on Saturday. On, on Saturday. Yeah, so the one on Wednesday isn't just a run. It's going to work in you know, some CrossFit um, functional movements and stuff like that, so it'll mix it up. But, yeah, yeah. Amping, amping it. And I, it's just I, I saw a friend that I hadn't seen in a long time last weekend. It was the soccer girls, and she's oh, cool. a personal trainer. And someone that she's training is training for a marathon, and she's trying to work with this girl, this girl, and she's just she feels like she has to run every single day. She's like, you don't have to do it that way, and it's just so much time involved. I mean, you just talked to a bike coach, and yeah, this weekend I did a you know did a sprint try just to get some points on the board, and the answer always seems to be volume. It's like the community or the general endurance community um, just isn't as open, you know, uh, about hearing a, another, you know, way of going about it. And I'm not saying they're wrong because volume has, has been proven. Like, there's studies that prove, you know, if you ramp up, you do your linear progression up to, you know, 40, 50 miles a week, whatever you want to do, you'll complete a marathon. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, but, we're ramping up the volume, but... Yeah. I mean, yeah. It's, it, this is, like, a whole different... It's in a different way, and I, I think what now that we're we've implemented a lot of strength in the early phases, it, it prepares you more for the volume, and that's mm -hmm. why I like this method of training um, because you you do feel better. You can handle that kind of uh, intensity and that kind of volume once mm -hmm. it starts to come at you. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, even in the and this is I've only done one marathon, but in the Flying Pig, mm -hmm. it was like it was so flipping hilly. Yeah. But I felt really strong. Yeah, and she was training in it. Hilton Head Island, maybe did a couple, a few hill workouts. Mm -hmm. But the thing is, you can get away with, um, like for Boston, we're going to do a couple hill workouts here, you know, closing in. But it, by training strength, you can also not have to necessarily put volume in on hill workouts or stuff mm -hmm. like that. Um, yep, and we're going to test out a new uh, nutrition product. Okay. That we've heard good things about the EFS. Yeah, we'll try that. I mean, I'll probably more use it in triathlon season. Oh, okay. But no, we can. We'll test it out. Um, 
did you want to test it on like a longer run or something like that? Mm -hmm. Cool. Yeah. Cool. Uh, anything else to say about volume? I think this is a pretty good topic that yeah. we should make sure we're clear on. I mean, other than I've never done the traditional, so mm -hmm. I've, I have no clue what that's even like. So to me, I just bought into this way of training a hundred percent. So when, if I, if I ever run into an athlete that is used to the traditional way, I don't relate. Mm -hmm. Like I have no, yeah, you don't have that. And now you hear background. them out for sure. But mm -hmm. I just, I, I don't even know what that's like. So, yeah. Yeah. I mean, it works. Uh, top three reasons kind of to be smart about your volume is one injury prevention. Um, you know, we've talked about that in previous podcasts is, you know, if you don't have strong muscles around your, your knees, you're going to be in trouble as a mm -hmm. runner. Uh, I, I mean, second point just being, you know, the lifestyle side of things is, you know, I want to go out with my friends. You know, I, I don't want to have to wake up early every single weekend when I work a busy, you know, 50, 60 hour a week. Yeah. Um, so that's another thing, but probably the top two things, lifestyle, yeah. um, workouts are always different. So you're recovering, recovering. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I know even from a nutrition standpoint, if you ever, a, a marathon runner, after they get done, you're so much more susceptible getting sick. Mm, totally. You know, and I've met a lot Are of... Are you sick? I'm never sick. No, I'm not sick. Yeah, I don't get sick. It's weird. I mean, I'm not invincible, but I don't get sick. I... But the interesting thing is, I remember, this was one of my friends, mm. and you know who I'm talking about, where mm -hmm. she... She got really sick. She did like two marathons within, Ooh. I think, a four week period yeah. and just like never could fully get back. And it's just, it can, I, I think she learned from it, mm -hmm. but it's just like, also, if you're doing 40 to 60 miles a week, you're just more susceptible to getting sick. So mm -hmm. if you're not eating the right way, if you're not recovering, not sleeping well, mm -hmm. there's just a lot more at stake, I think. It's almost just easier to balance recovery. When, when you train the fire method, you know, mm -hmm. is that you, it, it's just a little bit easier. Like I'm not saying you, you're, everyone is under recovering who runs that much. There's a lot of good runners who can do that and uh, take the proper recovery. But you know, probably eight times out of 10, that person uh, is in a state of overtraining at times mm -hmm. where they get the same results if they just took, you know, another day off or yeah. something like that. Yeah. Yeah. But, I like this way. Yeah, yeah, it's cool. I mean, everyone's, uh, some people love to run. Get it. Um, this week just wrapped up Palmetto Bluff. Great race experience. Good team stuff. Lots of uh, podium uh, finishes there, which is really cool. Um, and, yeah, we were talking volume, okay? Ramp volume at the right times, guys. It's not, you know, always needed 20 weeks out from your races. You know, now we're six weeks out. Time to dial it in and get that conditioning going. Yep. Good things. And when I say volume, a 10K is volume, too. But we'll be back on that next week. All right. Bye, guys. Take care.